Welcome to another day in the Matrix. This is Waters Above. Happy April, happy eclipse season, and happy third year anniversary to the channel. I can't believe it's already been three years here at Waters Above. Time seriously flies, and I just wanted to let you all know how grateful I am for your continued support over the years. It really means the world to me. And cheers to year three and many more. So you're all well aware since my last video, Bitcoin has been trading sideways in a range between 70,000 and 60,000, and the volatility has been wild lately in this crypto market. And the big question is, what's next? So I decided to dedicate today's video to giving you as many connections as possible for this month of April, and I'll be sharing a decode for this upcoming solar eclipse on April 8th, an event that I've been talking about here on this channel for a while now, so you'll definitely want to take notes while you watch today's video, because this will be packed with gems from start to finish, and very revealing of what energy to expect for this month and how it could affect the markets. And just a reminder, the new month has started on Patreon for April. If you've been waiting to join, I appreciate your support. You could sign up today by visiting patreon.com slash waters above to join our mastermind community membership and get instant access to my weekly red pill podcasts. That's my technical analysis podcast to wrap up the week and for me to review the altcoins that our community votes on. The past couple red pills have been packed with value. I've recently gone over my entire portfolio and all of the projects that I'm investing in, covered about 15 different altcoins. And this week I just revealed a crazy decode packed with information, not only about this month of April, but pretty much for the next three months. So packed with value in these podcasts and they're released every single week. So by becoming a Patreon supporter, you'll also get access to our Discord server for our community group chat so you could come hang out with the wolf pack you'll also have full access to my entire live stream archive with over a hundred live streams and over 250 behind the scenes uploads included in your membership and the patreon link can be found in the description box of this video and in the pinned comment below So if you're new here, we do cryptocurrency technical analysis and combine it with gematria, numerology, and astrology to understand these markets. Feel free to subscribe and turn on the bell notification to stay updated on when new videos come out. And make sure to give this video a like and share this channel with other conscious beings to help grow our community. And with that being said, let's take the clear pill. So here we are we are effectively in eclipse season and we are a week away from this total solar eclipse on april 8th a date that i've been talking about regularly here on this channel for almost a year now and i've brought it up in almost every video podcast or interview that i'm invited on to and now we're a week out from this crucial time frame And exactly six months ago, I released a full decode presentation titled The Great American Eclipse Decoded. Let me know in the comments section below if you checked it out. It's available for Patreon supporters, and it was released right there in October, October 2nd of 2023. And it was dedicated to both the October 14th, 2023 annular solar eclipse and this upcoming April 8th total solar eclipse both of these eclipses forming an x over the state of texas in the united states and the x symbolism has been in our faces more than ever since 2023 i mean it's literally all over the place we even see here x.com and i'll be talking about this this in a moment and i have this decode that i released here just a couple weeks ago from the debt clock, US debt clock showing this X over the United States. So it's right there in our faces. And it's been like that lately with the symbolism of the X since 2023. Noticeably, we had Elon Musk change the branding of Twitter to X in July of 2023. In the same month, XRP was no longer deemed a security by the court jesters and what's considered the first big win for ripple in the ongoing sec case again x r p x is their logo and this symbolism x is all tied to this upcoming solar eclipse on april 8th as i was just stating with this great american eclipse so 
We want to talk a little bit about this X symbolism. We have this X here of the annular solar eclipse from October 14th and this one coming up next week. X is the 24th letter in the alphabet, in the English alphabet. We're in the year of 2024 and we're in the Hebrew year of 5,784. 5 plus 7 plus 8 plus 4 adds up to 24. And this 24 is in the symbolism of Jupiter. And we've seen this in several of our, you know, symbols throughout this year. I'm going to get to that in a moment, by the way. But we keep seeing this 24 symbolism as well. And this all ties back to the Jupiter symbol. This number 24 is also tied to the sun and moon as rulers of the day and night, which make up the day as you're aware, the 24 hours in a day. The sun or soul or Helios, and we'll be bringing in the Gematria, speaking of the 24, Helios gives you this 24 in Gematria. And esoterically, the sun is tied to the dragon. In ancient China, there was a common belief that the solar eclipse happened because a dragon swallowed the sun. And we're currently in the Chinese year of the dragon. The dragon breathes fire. Fire, we have this 38 esoterically, three eights or eight, eight, eight equals 24. And the dragon breathes flames, 24 in Chaldean. We just showed you this with Helios. Again, sun symbolism. We just reviewed the mythology of what the eclipse means to these ancient cultures. And we're in the year of the X, the year of the 24. They've been showing us a lot of fire symbolism for years with this upcoming 2024 Summer Olympics. And we see right here, this is the Paris Summer Olympic Games, the flame logo. It also looks like a woman's face, but this is obvious. And you also have the prior symbol of the Summer Olympics was this right here, Paris Olympics 24 for the year 24. But this is obviously the symbol of Jupiter. So they're not hiding anything. Remember, there was a fire ritual that happened in Paris, France in 2019, the Notre Dame Cathedral, that happened on April 15th, another key date I'll be talking about. Um, in a little bit, but it's a date that I've been talking about for well over a year now. I even changed the banner up here on my X account to have this. It was from the movie Interstellar. You could watch that movie in the very beginning. You'll see where they're talking about this catastrophe that happened and this big dust cloud moves in and they're interviewing these people. And he says in April, I believe I'm right, the 15th of April, it's the only date that they bring up. It's really, really fascinating how out of all dates, that's the one they share. So this Notre Dame fire happened on April 15th, and I'll be talking about that more in a moment. But some of you might remember back in 2021, on April 14th, Bitcoin actually topped out before having about a 55% correction. So we're talking about this time frame back here in April of 2021. And what's so fascinating about this initial date Bitcoin topped out right there before this 55% correction into the lunar cycle, which I'll touch on a little bit later, but after it topped out, this was actually the same day that Bernie Madoff passed away. Some of you might be aware of Mr. Madoff. There's actually a great series on Netflix. Go check it out if you haven't already. I'm not telling you to support Netflix, but if you happen to have Netflix, go check it out. It's very telling of how corrupt this whole thing is. And if you're an XRP holder and you're following along what's going on with Ripple and you think they dropped the ball on what happened with the Ripple lawsuit, oh, <laughs> you're not even close. What the ball they dropped regarding what happened with Bernie Madoff is 10 times crazier. <laughs> but anyways, getting back to this, we had April 14th of 2021 market tops out on April 15th. It starts to turn over. Bernie Madoff died on the exact date that Bitcoin topped out. And then a year later, cryptocurrency had its own Bernie Madoff ritual. And of course, that was Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX. 
and we've just had some more updates happen with him recently. I'm not going to talk about that because it doesn't really matter at all in the context of today's video. It's very exoteric stuff. But coincidentally, when FTX went to zero, when it started to collapse, was on a lunar eclipse. And just like Terra Luna coincidentally collapsed on a lunar eclipse. As you're aware by now, these eclipses play a very big role in the crypto market. And if you're new to this channel, just look up almost any altcoin chart and go back to October 2023. And you'll see the altcoins, um, what they have done since that October 14th solar eclipse. And you'll see for yourself. You could just pull up pretty much any chart. We could see here on the theta chart, you get right here to October 14th, and we've pivoted bullish since. And you could do this with AI coins, you could do this with gaming tokens, whatever. The eclipses are running this market, the energy of this market, and the big pivot points in this market. So that was the first solar eclipse in the pair of eclipses that form what's called the Great American Eclipse, and this next one being just next week so it's so important i got this video out here in advance for you guys even though i've been talking about a lot of these key points throughout my videos over the year but earlier i brought up the significance of the jupiter symbolism because we have this upcoming paris summer olympics with the jupiter symbol right there you could see it's all about that 24 and we could add another layer to this decode with the gematria of jupiter and we have jupiter giving you 99 right there in english ordinal and the april 8th eclipse this year lands on the 99th day of the year esoterically 99 is two nines becoming 29 and this is when we look at the hebrew calendar this will be the 29th day of adar 2 in the hebrew calendar which transitions into a very interesting date because of the fact both the Gregorian calendar and Hebrew calendar are synced with this year of 2024 and 1940, which was during World War II. And this is where the, dec the decode becomes eerie, because in 1939, when World War II started effectively, it was the Chinese year of the rabbit. And just like last year, we had the war declared by Israel in Gaza on the 50th year anniversary of the Yom Kippur War, immediately after the end of the Jubilee, which is the 50 year cycle. And this war declared by Israel, just being one year after this Russia-Ukraine invasion, it has started to ramp up this narrative of World War III. And in the year of 1940, the year of the dragon, the same that we're in now, that's when the war really started to ramp up. And it was with a key trigger date that I'm going to be covering. And it's right here, April 9th. Now, we're talking about this solar eclipse being on April 8th, but I think you need to pay attention to the cyclicality of not only these calendars, but also these events that have been happening. But... We had this key trigger event on April 9th of 1940 when the National Socialists invaded Denmark and Norway. Very interesting because in the movie Tenet, there's an event that happens after this bombing at the Opera House in Kiev of the next big event being at the Oslo airport. So if you haven't seen the movie Tenet, check it out. I decoded a little bit of it in my last podcast I just released over on Patreon. I included a lot of extra stuff that won't be shared in this today just because of the timing of this video. That's a long form podcast that's about an hour and a half and it has everything you need to know. But I still wanted to make today's video to share as many key points with you as possible. That movie Tenet was definitely revealing something. And getting back to this, we had this event on April 9th happen right after the total solar eclipse in April of 1940. So this year we have all of our solar eclipses synchronized with 1940. All of our eclipses actually, all the lunar and solar eclipses in 1940 are synchronized with 2024. We're also in the year of the dragon, just like we were in 1940. 
we also have the Gregorian and the Hebrew calendars synchronized. This is incredibly rare to sync up like this. This is really mind-blowing, and I don't say this lightly. And this makes it so our solar eclipse next October matches in 1940. And guess what else matches as well? Rosh Hashanah, the Hebrew New Year, lands on the same dates this year as it did in 1940, both happening during a solar eclipse. And this matters because a big theme of back then in 1940 was the Jews and was the Holocaust and all of this stuff regarding that particular narrative. And then having a bad guy on the world stage that everyone was scared of Instead of Adolf Hitler, today it is Vladimir Putin. So, this time around, instead of the genocide of Zionists by the National Socialists, it's the genocide of Palestinians by the Zionists. It's effectively the same script, same timeline, involving the same key player, Team Zion. And I, I know it's heating up in here. Some of these truths are uncomfortable. This isn't a space for those who are sensitive. This is a form for truth and revealing the esoteric meaning behind why this so-called reality operates the way that it does. It's ran on a code. Gematria, numerology, and astrology are the instruments that play in harmony to create this code that runs the simulacrum. And although some events might seem like they're not in harmony at all, just think of it like classical music. It's beautiful many times, but then there's some dissonance and darkness that comes in to provide balance to the light. Because if we only had it one way, we wouldn't even know what we had was something to be grateful for. So, getting back to the decode, moments ago, I brought up the April 15th date, and this being a key ritual date because we had in 2019, April 15th, Notre Dame fire in Paris, April 15th in 2013, Boston Marathon bombing, April 15th, 1912, the sinking of the Titanic, and that's a big one because the sinking of the Titanic happened, and then a year later, the launch of the Federal Reserve System in 1913, and on that Titanic was some very highly influential and successful men that opposed the Federal Reserve System, and then it got signed in under Woodrow Wilson, and then the rest is history. And just recently, we had the launch of FedNow, and we had expansion in the BRICS nations. We're seeing currency debasement crisis in a lot of places around the world. We're also seeing de-dollarization, moving out of the US dollar as the world reserve. This is all tied to the Fed and Federal Reserve and fiscal policy and the cyclicality of what's going on here. Now, what those three events that I just shared have in common is that they land on a Monday and April 15th this year, as you can see in this calendar, lands on a Monday. So keep this in mind. Also, April 15th was the day Abraham Lincoln was assassinated and the day during the pandemic with the most C-19 deaths. And since Abraham Lincoln was the president of the USA during the timeline of the American Civil War, this makes the April 15th date even more intriguing to me because on April 12th this year, we have a new movie by Alex Garland will be released called Civil War. This is a movie about the second American Civil War to take place in the future. <laughs> and it brings up two states in the description. You can see them right there, California and Texas. And remember, the Great American Eclipse forms an X over the state of Texas. And the Tesla factory under Elon Musk is also in Texas. And if you look at Tesla stock lately, it has been getting slammed. Whilst it was super bullish a couple of years ago when we had Fed just printing money and giving it to the market, now it's not the case. We're seeing it go down. So whilst there's the rise of X.com under Elon, there's the fall of Tesla in regarding stock, and it's just kind of a balance of energy right now. It's making me feel that's why the X coins are not doing as well right now. 
it's likely that after our April 8th eclipse, probably once that energy subsides, that's when you're going to start to see big moves in things like XRP, XLM, XDC. But if you were to align those three charts I just shared, they're very, very similar. Anyways, getting back to this, X is the 24th letter in the alphabet. Brought that up earlier. This movie is releasing in April when the sun moves through Aries and the film is distributed by A24 Films. I find that to be pretty fascinating with the X and how this is coming out just a couple days after this solar eclipse. And this upcoming new moon solar eclipse will be in Aries. Also, Mercury is currently stationed retrograde throughout the most of this month. And April, Mercury will be retrograde, I believe, from it was yesterday till the 24th. Again, another 24 connection. But what's so powerful about this is not only is the solar eclipse in Aries, but Mercury is stationed retrograde in the sign of Aries. Aries is ruled by Mars, the god of war. So this all adds up to... The next war-related event is likely to happen before May 14th, in my opinion. Before May 14th, between now and then. Considering that in Sidereal, we're in Aries until May 14th. And the next key event that happened in World War II after April 9th was this date right here of May 10th. And the National Socialists invaded France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. There was even some change over in power in the UK. Wouldn't be surprised if that happened either. So I actually did decode this, the concept between the April 9th and May 10th dates. Check out my X account if you haven't already. This was the decode. And just make sure you're spelling my handle correctly. It's waters above, but above doesn't have the O. So check this out. I gave a lot of information of that. That covers everything so far in today's decode. And I know there's a lot of talk of this red heifer sacrifice and the eclipse passing through the cities of Nineveh, but that's covered on so many channels lately discussing biblical prophecy. And that's become so popular that it's obviously designed in a way to flood the algorithm. These so-called Bible scholars and theologians are talking about these things and in a way where it's obvious they're taking everything so literally and they're missing the mark on the esoteric meaning behind the scripture and that's why it actually has nothing to do with the second coming or the end times and it all actually is zionists engaging in black magic rituals it's kabbalah there's nothing holy about it it's just an addiction to this matrix a lacking of spiritual awareness and an obsession with this physical experience. Just study it without the rosy glasses of the Abrahamic indoctrination and you'll see it for yourself that there was nothing ever spiritual about any of these teachings. It was solely to keep you in a gerbil wheel of fear. And that's all that red heifer sacrifice stuff is about. So no offense to those that put all of their prana into that but I'm not going to. So the only final thing that I could add to this decode regarding the solar eclipse is that on April 8th, CERN plans to restart their Large Hadron Collider particle accelerator. It's very interesting how they're doing this on this exact date of the solar eclipse. Um, I'm not giving too much of my energy to this, but I believe this new show that just came out on Netflix called Three Body Problem was revealing a lot of what's going on in this matrix. Of course, it was also sprinkled with a sufficient amount of lies to keep us on our toes, but it still had a lot of truth exposed in that show. And I bring this up because this show brings up CERN quite often. And it's interesting how this show was released on March 31st. I believe you could see it right there, even in the eye. Got the date. Let me just show you really quickly why this is important with March 31st, sorry, 21st of 2024. And it's because they are 18 days apart and the mirror of 18 is 81. March 21st, the day the show released is an 81, 81st day of the year, excuse me. And this day of the solar eclipse is the 99th day of the year, and 9 times 9 is 81, so it's 
Just really interesting that we got some code here between just these two dates. We have the 18 days apart, we have 81st day, mirror of 18, and then 9 nines 81. And they're two weeks and four days apart. That's your 24, the key number tied to the X. Keep that number 24 in mind in your decodes and also mirror the key numbers. So this 24 becomes 42 and that's a war, 42. But check this out. And this is the last thing that I'll share before finishing off today's video with a quick recap of what's been going on in these markets and just sharing the TA and how to position yourself effectively for what's coming next in these crypto charts. So if we connect from February 24th, of 2022, the date of the Russia-Ukraine invasion, to April 6th. This is very powerful stuff, I believe. You want to keep this in mind. Whether you want to put it to this day or you want to put it to the 7th, it doesn't really matter. It's all going to be a window of energy, but I think this matters between the 6th and 7th since they have everyone paying attention to the solar eclipse, right? The specific date of the solar eclipse. And whether something happens isolated in the United States, that's fine. But this 773 is big because 773 is the 137th prime number. Now, I know this is a little bit more esoteric, but 137 is the 33rd prime number. 33 is the master number of transmutation. And this word eclipse gives you 33 in Gamatria. This is the energy moving into this eclipse. Russia and Israel will be, they will continue to be main players in this until USA gets involved next year during the year of the snake, which I will cover more in a future video. But for now, you can clearly see this decode means to expect volatility for these markets and that around these dates, leading into the eclipse specifically the 7th 8th and 9th because you want to look at everything like a trinity of time the day before the day of and the day after 7th 8th and 9th are big and then we have this 14th 15th 16th and there's a big big event happening on april 20th in regards to tropical astrology that could be very telling, but we'll wait because we have some time between now and then. We'll discuss that at a later time in a later video. But for now, let's check in with the charts and see what's going on with Bitcoin and XRP. And before we go into the charts, go ahead, give this video a like if you haven't already. Spread some love in the comment section. That's what we're all about here. And we're here looking at the Bitcoin chart. We have some levels. Over here is our current all-time high, which was short-lived we see that between 69,000 up to this current all-time high was a little under 7%, which is really interesting is when we go back to 2017, that was the same exact thing we did. Literally, we got 7% above all-time highs in the month of March. Here we are. We got 7% above prior all-time highs in the month of March. The only thing we haven't had yet is a much steeper correction. But if we were to take the days of when we officially topped out with the highest daily close and move it over to this pivot date, it was 22 days. And if you were to see from the highest daily close we had over here, let me actually load it up on this chart. Apologies for this taking a little bit of time to load. But 22 days later would be April 4th. Okay, so just keep that in mind because we are still on track, especially with today having a 5% candle to the downside after a very bullish monthly close that we just had, but showing a new resistance in the short term, which is off of this bounce here. So let's go through the play by play because so far this is mimicking March 2017. Okay, I'm just pulling a basic fib right now. We had this swing high to this swing low. We came up into this golden pocket territory got many rejections below the 786 fib as you can see here we tried holding this level of around 71k and then we broke below it we gravitated back to it and we had about what is this two weeks now of closures okay one full week technically and then we just recently got rejected now there's a lot of time in today's daily close but this was the level to hold and you can see we were trapped in this area for 
that full week. As of today, we're seeing some weakness. We've broke below what I'm calling a micro support. And now we have this one month or more macro support to the downside. This level right here is somewhere between 61 and 63K. You can see that once we broke into this ne next leg up, we had about four or five days chopping sideways before we initiated the current all-time high and then we return right back to the same level which is why i marked it out because since then we've bounced now we're doing a lower high technically we can't confirm that until we have one more lower low which would be a daily close below 61.5 so we're right now smack dab in the middle of this trading range. The stock market is just opening up soon. That'll bring in some more volatility. We also have the CME chart, a gap right around 64K. Let me pull that up for you. And we haven't quite filled that gap yet. So as of today, we've gotten a little bit into this territory. We still have the stock market closed. I do feel that this is key for us to hold on the 12 hour chart because you can see this white moving average as the 55. It's likely we're going to fill this sooner than later. And then we have to see how Bitcoin interacts at the 64K level because we haven't had too much time trading below that in this recent range. We've been spending most of our time trading above that 64K level. So for us to have only a couple days trading at the low 60s and then bounce so bullishly this was clearly a bull trap in the micro perspective now we have these levels at the bottom if we were to come down here that would really squeeze alts you'll see alts give up even more of their recent gains probably just returning everything back to where it was in like late february now we have this 61 62k level if we were to start closing daily closes below there i do suspect we would have a push down into this 53k level pretty fast so let me show you why i'm going to be pulling a fib from this swing low to the swing high in reverse this is a bearish fib pull and i'm doing it this way on purpose so that i can get the downside targets and you're going to see right when i do this this level pops up of 52,600 and that was right there back testing the prior trading range exactly on top of it before we broke out so that is an area of interest and that's a cool little trick you can do with fibs by the way if i double click this and i go to style i have this level turned off because i'm not looking at a lot of data right now i'm looking at a very small amount of information on the charts so we have this bigger pullback correction level it's not me saying we will go down there, but if we were to, from the current high that we have down to 53, that would be a 28% correction. And if we look at what happened in March of 2017, it's pretty similar. It had about a 30%, 31% correction. So it would be incredible if we just mimic that one by one because we can now use that chart to our advantage for the remainder of this cycle the odds are it's going to be pretty scary accurate since it has been so far even with this big red candle coming in after this bull trap you can see right here so we had new highs slightly broke above big correction bull trap broke down here we have new all-time highs correction bull trap and then we broke down and the area that we want to look for is anything below these daily closes which would be here these daily closes somewhere around 62. okay so we've went over the more extended pullback range one other thing to do we're going to be pulling up some of our moving averages we have today on the daily chart for bitcoin a retest of the 34 exponential i'm going to turn off all of this noise and just show you the emas you see this red moving average the last time we back tested it was right before the lunar eclipse so we haven't really concretely closed the daily below this 34 ema i would keep that in mind if we were to close below that that's a big sign of weakness and the 55 is likely to be tested that sits you right around that level that i was just sharing 61k so that's it guys if we close a daily below 60 or below this 55 simple moving average on the daily we're going to back test this prior trading range somewhere around 53 would make a lot of sense in a bullish case also this aligns nicely with our pi cycle top indicator 
we tend to get rejected off the green line and then after we do we chop around near it and then we back test this yellow moving average which we've done in every cycle and as of today it sits around 52k right in that level i was just sharing and when i double tap this you can see what i mean this is our first time testing it we chopped we came back to the yellow line over here got above it chopped sideways came back to the yellow line we even went much below it even in this cycle here we did the same thing got above it chopped sideways and came back to this yellow line so just keep that in mind another thing is the stock to flow model we tend to flip into back testing stock to flow line sometime around this halving and we did it in the last cycle right before it over here we did it slightly after um, that's something to keep in mind because of the volatility in these prior two cycles very similar to today so we've covered a lot um what we really have to get through though is this week for confirmations because with a weekly close below this 67k level which we're below right now if we were to have a weekly close be below right here between this below this hammer candle that happened on the march 18th close that would be a very bearish candle that would be um showing a definite sign of weakness especially if we cannot break into price discovery and continue now so if we get this red weekly close first before getting above 74k that's obvious weakness and i just showed you that cme gap around 64 we're very close to that all in all we're still technically in a macro uptrend but now you have the downside levels to consider for any deeper pullbacks and if we were to get any pullback to the low 50k territory right now that would be incredibly healthy for this crypto market for the remainder of our cycle and please know i am not bearish at all in this market i am just discussing a potential mid-cycle correction but i'm not flipping bearish by any means like i've said since q1 of 2023 i am very bullish on 2024 and we're not even halfway through although the slight new all-time highs in bitcoin happening in march recently was surprising this stall out that we're getting leading into the halving is actually quite normal so if this whole market was to repeat what it typically does during presidential election years which i've showed you guys in prior videos with this april and may a little bit red june neutral and then re you know just remain bullish for the entirety of the rest of the year that would be very healthy right now so if we were to repeat what we usually do on the year of the dragon 12 year cycle and presidential election years with a correction into may and june for the traditional markets and please note i am very clear about that when i say the traditional markets because we know crypto moves much faster that could mean that we could get our moves sooner so if we saw bitcoin breaking below 60k this month which is less than 10 percent away as i film today's video then the deepest part of the correction could come sooner for the crypto market than the stock market and please remember we're in a bull run so if you are not exposed to this market at all and you're looking to dca into positions well any and all pullbacks are an opportunity so take advantage of them and never go all in have an investment thesis in place and dollar cost average when the market is red never fomo into pumps today's a great example of the start of a red week we are already down eight percent in bitcoin we are moving into this eclipse season just keep calm and make a plan if you don't have one it's important you have one now so have an investment thesis in play dca when the market is red never fomo into pumps stay calm stay relaxed let this market come to you but make sure you have a plan in the meantime because the only thing that gets results in this game of investing is action so to wrap up the bitcoin analysis what would invalidate this whole idea of a pullback that we were just talking about is a daily close above 72k effectively breaking this resistance of course any new higher highs as well but that 72k level is big and the next upside target for bitcoin would be around 83k so keep that in mind if we were to have another impulse to the upside in price discovery whether it be right now or whether it be in a month or two months 83k is really the next big upside level so keep that in mind if we were to have that that move but for now we're chopping around the 60 to 70k range as of today we're right there in the middle of it we had a 
pivot off of the lunar eclipse, very bullish, but is shown to be a bull trap. We have a stock market at all time highs that's incredibly overheated and it's perfectly timed for this month moving into April where we typically see the stock market pull back. So if this was to all align, it would make sense that this is the month. This is really it. These next two months of April and May into June, this is like a pivot month to get in position before we really start seeing crazy things happen in this market. So we have 61K as our structural support. Daily closes below that and we'll have Bitcoin trading into the 50K region fast. And so far, the structure is so similar to March 2017 for Bitcoin and the crypto market. And when Bitcoin has its 30% correction in March 2017, it bottomed out and got bought back up so fast. So like I said earlier, all dips are opportunities to DCA. Don't sleep on these opportunities. Let's quickly check in on the XRP charts because I do believe XRP is now back below 60 cents. Yes, it is. But we are still chopping in the same range that we've been in since we had this huge breakout in July that I brought up earlier in the video. Right now, we have this 200 exponential getting back tested. That's great to see, especially while the 200 simple moving average and exponential are coiled together. But we do have to just look at levels. And with this weakness that we're getting in XRP right now, we really need some money to move into this. Otherwise, it will just keep doing whatever Bitcoin does. If Bitcoin has a correction, this will have a correction. And it's not looking good right now. So this is really testing the investors. The people who are positioned in this project are really getting tested with it. And a big reason why we cover this is because this is one of the last movers. And when it does move, it goes really parabolic fast. It doesn't give you a moment to get in. And then when it happens, even influencers that never talk about XRP start talking about it all of a sudden. And then they trap those new investors at the top. So if you are new to this game and you want a position that is clearly suppressed, oversold, and has a lot of upside potential, this is it. You're not late on this one. But don't go all in. Have this be a portion of your portfolio. I myself have always kept XRP somewhere around 15 to 25 percent, nothing more. I would be dumb to. I've always traded this project when needed, but there's way more opportunity in other places if you can time this well. Now with XRP, it doesn't give you too much time to time it in the moment. It just goes, right? Like what happened back in July. So. I want you to know that this is one of those opportunities. I myself am looking for other positions because I'm already situated in XRP. It's my second biggest holding. I am not planning to add anything else to this. I'll most likely be putting some more into XDC, into Doge. That's another solid play with chart history to prove that it does what it does every four years. So. I have enough of this project for me. I'm staying calm, I'm staying patient, and I'm looking for this month of April to really be telling on what's coming next for XRP, given this SEC case. So for now, we're just we're just chopping in the same range. We are making higher highs, higher lows so far over the past two years now with this push up. So you can see that we're in the uptrend vibe. It's obvious. It's like a parallel channel effectively. And in my next video, I'll be covering this a little bit more, but there is not too much more to say about XRP. It's just still in the same range. We have to see liquidity come into this. And so far it hasn't been showing up. If anything, it's been leaving and going other places. And we're just gonna see a rebalancing act eventually, right? I said this in my last video as well regarding total two and total three market cap. XRP plays a very particular role in all of this, so I will be filling you guys more in on what I'm anticipating next for XRP, but until then, we need some movement. We need some action, so I'll leave this one here. I appreciate and I'm grateful for every single one of you. For anyone who's joining the Mastermind Community Patreon this month, I appreciate your support. It really means the world to me, and I'll be catching you all very, very soon on my next Red Pill podcast coming up next week. In the meantime... Wishing you all the best week in the matrix. Much love.